I wrote this in response to the Christchurch massacre in March 2019, although what I wrote is still applicable. I remember back in 1994 how shocked, outraged and disgusted I was by the massacre carried out at the Cave of the Patriarchs. To kill people praying seemed even more monstrous than simply killing them. But a lot of water has sadly passed under the bridge in the last quarter century. When I heard about the massacre in Christchurch, I was not shocked, I was not outraged, and I was not disgusted. Because this is now the world we live in. In the last week, I have heard many different opinions on the massacre, from shocked, outraged, disgusted, to, he's my new hero. The truth is that the world is more complex than it used to be. Who should we support? The Muslims who came to destroy our way of life? The government that brought them to the West? Or the man who murdered them? Which one of them is on our side? I saw a company statement. I'm sure many companies had them, but the one I saw blamed the massacre on ethno-nationalism and people holding anti-immigrant views. Sorry, but the massacre didn't take place under our watch. New Zealand is not an ethno-state. It should be, but it isn't. Instead, it's like every other country in the Western world, a multicultural state. This massacre took place under their watch. Exactly as those on the right have been saying for decades, we always said that multiculturalism would lead to violence, and it keeps happening, and it will keep happening, because under liberalism, the only solution to a problem is more of the problem. If multiculturalism is a problem, then we must surely need more multiculturalism, which means that this is not the end, it's simply a continuation, once more in an endless cycle of murder and massacre, all brought to us by our own governments. But there is further failure of liberalism, the destruction of the family. I've heard the gunman's grandmother and uncle condemn him. I've heard that New South Wales police took his mother and sister to a safe place as they required protection. But in none of this have I heard anyone mention his father. Dead? Alive? Whereabouts unknown? A traveller who made his money on cryptocurrency? Did he have friends? We haven't seen any interviewed, even unwillingly. No partner, no ex-girlfriends. He seems to be a man who kept looking for a place to belong and could not find it. What he did find was that there was no escaping multiculturalism. Even in a city called Christchurch, located on the most distant isle of the most distant country in the Western world, he couldn't escape. As more alienated young men find this out, they will fight back. That is already true in many Muslim communities. Their alienated young men have been fighting back for decades now. It doesn't show any signs of ending, and now more alienated young men from different ethnic and religious backgrounds will join the fight against the modern world, and each other, and you, and me. Our governments have no answer to this, because they are the cause of it.